Coming up on First at Four, a mudslide in Pike County closes a busy highway for several hours today. And Governor Matt Bevin announces new security measures at the state capitol building, but some say those regulations go too far. Breezy wind, winds and cold temperatures going to be the big story for today. As we head into tonight, it starts to turn cold quick. The rest of the week in those details now on First at Four. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, a rock slide on US 460 in Pike County is causing some major delays. It happened this morning below the old Millard High School. WYMT's Marianne Fletcher has the latest. A mudslide halted traffic on this busy highway for more than three hours. It's it's really just the freeze and thaw that that gives us most of our trouble with the rock falls. During our warmer days, rain builds up on the rocks, and when it freezes, it expands. Then as it thaws out, mud and rock debris fall into the roads, causing a big mess as you can see here. We had to bust up the bigger rocks with this excavator behind us. Um, then we will load them out and haul them away. The slide is causing foot traffic to businesses in the area to slow down. It's a little bit of inconvenience for me and my clients because we both have to reschedule. Melinda Kilgore at Silver Shears says although her walk-ins are slowing down, she is thankful for the men and women cleaning the slide. I'm glad the guys are out there cleaning everything up so nobody will get hurt. Right now, one lane of the busy road is open, but the road will not be completely opened until later this evening. In Pike County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Coming up tonight at 6 here, more from business owners in the area about how this affects their traffic. Well, we are about 30 to 35 degrees colder than where we were this time yesterday, and that cold air not going anywhere anytime soon. Take a look at Pinpoint Doppler. Flurry activity has been mainly to the northeast and north. A few flurries still possible up in Lawrence County, and as you work along Interstate 64, we'll hold on to that stray flurry chance for tonight. Not expecting much, at least out of that, but temperature is going to be the big story. Where the clouds are clear right now, well, you're a little bit warmer into the upper 30s. Cloud cover keeping a lot of us like Hazard, Jackson, even Pikeville in those lower 30s at this time. And the winds certainly not helping the issue. In fact, wind chills going to become very prevalent as we headed to tonight with 10 to 20 mile per hour winds right now. Gusts a little bit higher than that. And it's going to make these low temperatures, which are already going to be cold, feel even colder as we head into the evening hours. The Cumberland Valley with clear skies should drop into the teens tonight. Kentucky River, you'll see a mix of teens and lower 20s for tonight's low temperature. And as you work to the northeast, cloud cover should keep you slightly warmer in Paintsville and Inez and even as you work over into Logan, West Virginia. The cold continues through Thursday and Friday. And of course, we continue to watch that system on your Saturday. Steve, some things starting to become a little bit more clear, but we still have quite a bit of time until that system. We'll tell you everything we know coming up here in a few short moments. All right, thank you, Andrew. A trial date is set for Ashley Lawson and Thomas Miracle. The two face charges in connection with the 2015 murder of Trevor Dykes in Clay County. The trial will not be until April of next year, nearly five years since the crime happened. WIMT's Connor James talked to Dykes' parents today about the delay and joined us now with more. Connor? Yes, yeah, Steve, almost five years. Officials say that Thomas Miracle hired Roscoe Henson to kill Trevor Dykes back in July of 2015. They say Ashley Lawson took part in the plan due to a custody battle over their kid. Now, Roscoe Henson pleaded guilty to murder for hire back in May of last year. The parents of Dykes say this whole process of waiting for close to five years for justice is incredibly painful for them. It's like you get no closure. It's it's court date after court date, proceeding after proceeding, and you know, you just want some kind of normal, normalcy back to your life, which our lives never be normal. 
Now, the family clearly has been upset about how long this is taking, but they've been doing something in the meantime to help heal. Trevor has a bunch of cars, and his dad is now repairing them to keep his memory alive. I'll have more on that coming up at 6. All right, Connor James in our newsroom, thank you. New security measures were announced for the Kentucky Capitol building as the General Assembly session got underway. Governor Matt Bevin says the new rules are intended to keep people safe, especially after large rallies in the Capitol last year as lawmakers debated pension reform. But others say the regulations go too far and it's keeping people from getting open access to their government. Emily Arroyo reports from Frankfurt. Guys, walking around the Capitol today, you don't really see any major changes, but you have to remember that it was a quiet day here in Frankfurt as the legislative session progresses. It's likely that crowds and protesters will come out at some point. That's when they'll run into limited access and new regulations. The big focus of those changes rests right here on the third floor of the Capitol where both the House and Senate meet. According to new emergency regulations signed by Governor Matt Bevin at the start of January, crowds will no longer be able to gather outside of either chamber, and officials will crack down on enforcing gallery passes that have been needed to watch proceedings inside. People without official passes might also run into restrictions using the underground tunnel connecting the Capitol and the Capitol Annex. State police say some of these changes boil down to safety hazards of overcrowding and congested hallways. But some say the move will limit the public's access to confront lawmakers and make their voices heard. The Capitol building don't belong to this governor. It don't belong to me or any individual. This Capitol building is the people's house and they ought to have the access they need. We'll continue to track how these new regulations limit access to the public as the session progresses. But for now, in Frankfurt, I'm Emily Arroyo, WKYT. From the White House to Capitol Hill and back again, President Donald Trump makes the rounds in Washington today to find support for his border security demands. While the president was rallying Senate Republicans, furloughed government workers joined Democrats to say enough is enough. We want this shutdown lockout to end this very minute. But with both sides dug in on opposite sides of a border barrier, there still seems to be no end in sight. And late this afternoon, the president said a meeting with Democratic leaders was a total waste of time, and he reportedly walked out of it. The president is threatening to withhold FEMA funds from California. In a tweet today, the president blamed forest fires in the state on the state. The president tweeted, if California had proper forest management, the forest fires would never happen. He then announced he told FEMA not to send the state any more money unless California could get its act together. CBS News confirms that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein plans to resign once the new Attorney General is in place. For about a year and a half, Rosenstein has been the top Justice Department official overseeing Special Counsel Robert Mueller's probe into Russian interference into the 2016 election. Senate confirmation hearings are set to begin next week for William Barr, President Trump's choice to replace Jeff Sessions. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham met Barr this morning. I can assure you, based on what I heard, that has a high opinion of Mr. Mueller. Yesterday, a new development surfaced. Lawyers for former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort accidentally revealed in a court filing that the special counsel has evidence Manafort shared polling data with an associate linked to Russian intelligence during the 2016 campaign. It's the first time a Trump official has been accused of sharing campaign information with Russian interests. For the third day in a row, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was not present for oral arguments. Ginsburg is able to vote on the cases before the court by reviewing transcripts of those oral arguments. The 85-year-old key liberal justice is still recovering from surgery she had last month to remove two cancerous nodules from her lung. According to the high court, there was no evidence of any remaining disease following the surgery. Doctors found the cancer incidentally after Ginsburg suffered a fall in November. She has battled cancer in the past but never had to miss oral arguments.
The Secretary of State made an unannounced visit to Iraq. Secretary Mike Pompeo stopped in Baghdad this morning. Pompeo reportedly met with several Iraqi leaders, including the country's prime minister and its foreign minister. This is Pompeo's first trip to Iraq since the new government took over. Reporters asked him questions about the U.S. Navy veteran imprisoned in Iran for months. He did not answer those questions. He also did not answer questions about U.S. troops' presence in Iraq. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Wednesday afternoon. The Dow closes up today more than 91 points. Straight ahead on First at Four, there are new developments in the case of a woman who gave birth while in a coma at a nursing facility in Arizona. And the cold temperatures continue along with mostly sunny skies. The seven-day forecast is coming up. Catch all the high school and college action during sports overtime on Friday and Saturday nights on WYMT. Heroes and Icons and WYMT.com. Sponsored by Appalachian Wireless. This is breaking news from Wolf Williams and Reynolds. 80 to 90% of workers who apply for disabled Social Security or black lung benefits get turned down the first time. Half or more of those believe the process is over.